and opportunities. And so you're going to probably, you're going to take your Sugar CRM install, you're going to create at least one dummy record for each of those, you're going to export that, it'll give you a CSV file, I'm going to open the CSV file, I'm going to fill the data in with what I want from my, from my historical data, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to pull it in. Yeah, I think that would be a smart move, enter a dummy record on each of those. Right. Good I'm thinking, Ron. Okay. And how about on the... Um, what I really like about this yeah. is that it's not just said the import's done, it's come back, it says the import's done, and these are your records that you created. Ah, okay. Which I really like. And then, obviously, now it's in the system. It's just a record like any other. So we can go directly into this, and we can see that these were the values that we right. had. Right. Okay, perfect. The values that you pulled go. in. And, of course, so now... What I'm curious about here, though, too, required fields. We haven't specified anything as required in here. How do we know if something's required in, in Sugar? Does it tell us if it's required or not? I don't um, know. Maybe I'm asking you a question you I'm you not sure of the answer to that. I, I presume it would do. But, mm-hmm. um, like, I'm not seeing a name. I certainly don't see anything on this that would required. indicate what, that What if we were to create... Field. Let's do it quickly. Let's create a new account just real quickly on the fly. Ah, uh, okay. It's got a little red asterisk beside name. Actually, so, I didn't spot this. Uh, well, I kind of spotted it retrospectively, but if you looked on the import, um, the asterisk was on the import field. Wow. So, you know, because, so that'd be the one field that you couldn't get rid of. Yep, you're when not you allowed to, to enter it as blank or nothing. You've got to put some data in there. Okay. So, and actually that was on the import mapping. Can we show that CSV file again? Let's open it up again just to see. This? Yes, please. Uh, and if it's not there, don't. No. There's nothing on there. No, okay. It's yeah. on the import mapping. Oh, right. Okay. Um, when we do the map. So, hey, let's. I'm just going to do this again just to sure. show you. I'm going to link to the same file. Right. Next. Uh, and there it is, right? You're right. You're right. Wow, good memory. Fantastic. It's good to be right. <laughs> it is good to be right. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Hey, that's really simple. Uh, I think that is an excellent import tool. I okay. think it does everything to, that you would want it to. Okay. Not really looked into linking data up, but you know, um, you've seen that the IDs are on the exports, and right. so the, you could obviously use the IDs to right. link records. So if you bring in um, contact ID contacts in, yeah. you could <coughs> probably use the ID to link to the account. Exactly. And so the smart thing to do for a small business would be the only thing they really need to understand is if 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 you have records that are associated to other records. For example, I have a contact that's associated to a company, I need to be concerned of the order in which I import them. I'd want to import my companies first. Yes. And then import the contacts. And in fact, before I even did all that, um, going back to our dummy record scenario, it'd probably be a worthwhile exercise to create a dummy company, ABC Co., and create a, a, a dummy contact and then associate them to ABC mm-hmm. Co and export that, and so we can see which column is filled out, and then do the same format for for our import. Yeah, and and just just to think about that a little bit further, look, yeah. even before any of those, you might want to import your employees first, right? Because obviously, then you can link their employee. I didn't use that field, so the account manager field, I've not used it on this import, but you could then set the employee for the account manager, and that would okay. automatically be done. And, and if you're a small shop, you're probably not even going to import your employees, but you want to set your employees up. That's a really good a really good mention. So set the employees up first, and then load your companies and your contacts and your existing opportunities. Yeah. Just, just worth a quick mention also while we're on this screen. I really like this. Um, you can set default values if you haven't got a value for something. Oh, so that actually, that's using the drop downs from the actual system. So right. that's kind of cool. Yeah. If you're going to have, you're going to be bringing in two thousand customers, you don't even need to bother with that that particular right. item in your spreadsheet. Right. You can just right. say, well, set it to customer. Right. And the industry is also the same. So okay. any drop downs would be that. Cool. Okay. And and the one thing we didn't look at here that's always a concern too is who's set up as the owner 
of, of an account. Now we didn't have that field in our field list. We we eliminated it, but so um, because I think it's fairly standard on on systems of this type that that have got this type of input. Right. That we're logged in as the admin, so it's actually marked as the admin as the owner. As the owner, and then you're going to have to do well, a process of saying. Actually, that's not true. The admin's not the owner. The admin will be the person who created the record. The owner is whoever you set it to. On here. Right. So that's another thing a small business wants to be concerned about is to put your employees in the system first, and then when you import, because you might want contacts owned by certain salespeople or, or uh, uh, companies owned by certain salespeople, opportunities owned by certain salespeople. So mm -hmm. that's a good mention as well, too. Okay. There well, you go. Hey, we don't importing. Need, importing. It's that simple. We don't need to keep it to 20 minutes. Um, this is great. I mean, I think that's enough for someone to see what's happening. Uh, we'll do the exact same thing next for... Um, either Microsoft Dynamics CRM or for Salesforce.com mm -hmm. and take a look how it is. Fantastic. Hey, thanks, Al. Hey, Al, um, before we run away, how can people get a hold of you? What's your web address? My web ad address is www.ashtonitsolutions.ca and my email address is alan at ashtonitsolutions.ca. That's fantastic. And hey, my uh, my web address is rondegiusti.com. It's www.rondegiusti.com. I'll put it up at the end for everyone to see. And if you go to either of those sites, I'm sure we've got all our contact details, our phone numbers, our, our email address, and the rest of it. It's great. Hey, thanks, Al. See you again next week. Okay, bye.